reservation called Fort Berthold. The Dakota Access Pipeline, a lot of people don't connect where the oil is coming from. It comes from the Bakken, which is right underneath Fort Berthold. So we're still fighting to keep it in the ground at the source. So we're teaching people that not only to keep it in the ground, but what are we going to do if we don't have this industry? Because I have brothers and uncles and cousins that work in the industry. That's their job. Workers are really feeling um, uh, vulnerable in, in the economy for a variety of different reasons, but especially if you're in a heavy emitter industry. Is What am I going to do? What am I going to do and what are my children going to do? What kind of future are we going to have for them? When we talk about new jobs, we need to talk about them being decent jobs. We not, need to talk about them not being precarious. But what's really clear and not said enough is that they need to be organized, right? Because that's where power is. Power is in organized labor. Los trabajadores del carbón que producen eh, bastante contaminación, pero tienen buenas condiciones de trabajo. Todavía en cuanto los eh, trabajadores y trabajadoras que están en las eh, energías renovables no tienen seguridad y tienen pésimos eh, trabajos. Estas son las contradicciones the humbug forest, they tried to steal it, cut down the trees and dig another coal pit. But we must save the carbon sink, protect those mighty trees, leave the forest for the beast but and the bees. This land is we were put on the reservation, they told us that we had to become ranchers. That's what colonization has taken away from us, is literally our livelihoods, and makes us think that that job, that nine to five, is what is our reality. It's a false reality that's been put onto us by a capitalistic model. And so for me, just transition just isn't about green jobs. It's about getting back what we had culturally Jackson is 80 to 85 percent black. About 50 percent of the community is unemployed. One of my friends and comrades is now the mayor of the city. Right now, because Jackson has been divested from and deindustrialized, the land in our community is fairly cheap. But one of the main things that we've been doing is trying to gain as much access to the land in the community as possible. We want to decommodify it and make it a communal property. Number two is building as carbon neutral and waste neutral cooperative enterprises and related systems as we can. And the third component is what we call just transition policy. We exist in a state dominated by some of the most reactionary political forces in the country. So when we talk about climate change and climate solutions, they come with, okay, we're going to block you from doing that. So we're really concentrating on changing the regulations within the municipality because that is something they can't change through the legislative act. But ultimately, we're going to have to legislate this. So that fight is going to have to be waged, both on the municipality, but also within the state. We know the situation is really, really dire. All of the science is pointing to that, and not just the science, the impacts that are being faced already by people on the ground everywhere in the world. No continent has been spared. 
But of course, the poorest and the most vulnerable people are going to be the ones that face the brunt of it and that will be the most unprepared to deal with it. <laughs> You just can't describe it what's actually happening. Some of the you have to see for yourself, people having to leave homes or find new ways to grow their food or having to worry about the rising waters or, or the warming waters even and fish leaving and it's just a whole need to change the lifestyle to adapt and some people even having to leave home. So for us there's no choice but to stand up and say something. In Puerto Rico we just had a whole bunch of hurricanes, two of them category five huge hurricanes going through in no small measure due to climate-induced changes in temperature in the Caribbean Sea. Water was gone, most of the agriculture was gone. We still have most of the island without power. We have very limited communications. Our government decided to hoard food, hoard gasoline, take in all the money and the funding that was coming in. Nothing was reaching us. And when Cuba decided that they wanted to send a work brigade to help us with electricity, the U.S. prohibited them from coming over. Just transition that just recovery. It's about building upon what survives in our kind of weather and in our new changing weather that we're facing now. To support each other, collectivizing the recovery. In the Philippines, which is at the forefront of the climate change, having been battered by a number of huge and very destructive typhoons. Now we're facing uh, the threat of authoritarianism with about 14,000 deaths since Duterte came to power and now he's threatening to declare martial law anytime soon. Despite all this, the campaign to push back on coal is still going on. In 2012, we were confronting 10 new coal plants. But now it's 59 coal plants. And that's just half of what the Indonesians are fighting against and one-third of what the Vietnamese are fighting against. We've managed to actually derail around seven big coal plants. For the first time, coal is no longer cheap. It's now a national debate. And in response, some of the senators and even the Department of Finance came up with a proposal to tax coal. This is a dying industry. In China alone, from 2016 to 2017, one million workers lost their job. In the mining sector only, the workers' movement needs to be proactive and think about this before government discusses it and would be detrimental to them. We're in the same boat, and this boat is sinking, whether you're from the Philippines or the Rhine. Chile began in New York City five years ago. We felt that the energy trends and the emissions trends are so horrific that we need to assert confidently and with utmost determination the need for public ownership and democratic control over energy systems. Since then, we've actually built up a strong U.S. presence, particularly with the unions that oppose the Keystone Pipeline. We're about 60 unions now from 21 countries. The green growth model of mobilized private investment in the green economy, of talking about the great profit-making opportunities of green transition. This is not working. It's not producing the transition that we need. Save our jobs! Thank you, the wind! When I started here, it was uh, jackets top size for uh, the soil fields, but they went into the renewables now. It's kind of the same work, you know, we're actually building the things that are going to the, going to the seabed, and then the turbine sits on top of it. It's quite a crucial component to 
the renewable sector. Currently we're doing a job for CB Heavy Lifting, by far reckon that we owed a few million pounds from them for work that we've already completed and apparently they're refusing to pay it. The guys are actually working at the moment without any wages. We believe that they're trying to shut it down so they can maybe come in here themselves and use this yard to their own benefit with obviously the resources that are already in it. We're just kind of stopping anything going in or out this yard just to keep this yard open for us. Workers fighting back opens a window of opportunity to talk about a different kind of society. When 100,000 jobs disappear in the North Sea, what is the plan? What's the plan for the other fields that have not been developed? The Scottish Government has recently had a big consultation over future energy policy and we got together a group of people to put in a submission to that, looking after the jobs of people who are currently employed in defence and construction and the oil industry and so on, making the best use of their skills, not putting them on the scrap people. We have to have another way of providing energy for the world. All of those ways of providing energy for the world take much more jobs, much more work, than burning coal. Climate jobs only means jobs that make a real contribution to reducing carbon dioxide emissions. Globally, we think about 120 million jobs. Many of us who have been campaigning over the environment, trying to tie it to workers' demands, we're beginning to see the possibilities of the reality from the paper to the street, to the factory, to the demands for the rank and file, to have a different kind of world and a different kind of future, which guarantees them terms and conditions, but also guarantees them a better world. This land is your land, this land is my land, from California.